On January the 2nd, 1922, an Aggie named E. King Gill was in the stands at Old Fire Park Stadium in Dallas, near the side of the present Cotton Bowl. He was spotting players for the news writers at a postseason game between Texas A&M and the great praying colonels of Center College. Kuchdana, ex-Bible, had a team that had been riddled with injuries before the game. At one point in the game, it looked as if he'd run out of players and wouldn't have enough to finish the game. Coach Bible summoned King Gill out of the stand to suit up and be prepared to play. Thus, King Gill became the 12th man and sparked the legend that endures until this day. He exemplifies the spirit, the spirit which is so apparent as he came forth ready to play football in 1922 and later to serve his country in war. He is an example of the kind of spirit which has inspired Aggies everywhere in times of war and peace. He is the 12th man to which we all aspire. It is my great privilege to present to you Dr. E. King Gill, the original 12th man. Texas A&M in 1922 was just a small little country college. It had probably about 1,500 students, counting everybody on campus. They felt very remotely located, a long seven miles from Bryan, Texas. Basically, at that time, it was a four-year program with emphasis on agriculture and engineering, which was the mandate of Texas A&M and why it was established. King Gill was a, a student, like most students that come to A&M. He grew up in Dallas in a big city, a good high school athlete, and he comes to A&M and uh, becomes a student in the Corps of Cadets and becomes very active in, in athletics. A lot of people don't know, but he was basically a star in three sports, football, basketball, and baseball. King Gill was a big guy. He was probably 6'3 or 6'4. So he was a big man in his day. And of course, the first people to go after him was the basketball coach. Because, oh boy, we've got a center or a great forward, and he was. He played a lot of different positions. In basketball, he was a, a forward and a center. In baseball, he played a, a number of positions in pitch. At that time, players played multiple positions. And in football, he played everything from a split end to a, a running back to a defensive back. At that time, usually when they put 11 players on the field, they went both ways. Football uh, in the post-war period, this is the post-World War I period in the late teens and early 20s, is totally different from it was today. Uh, A&M, with 36 players, had a very large team, but when they traveled out of town, they would usually take 17 to 20 players. The official picture they took in November of 1921 had about 36 or 37 players in it. And so, while he played and was on uh, practice squad as a sophomore for all practical purposes, what will happen is when the season starts to come to an end, they want him to play basketball. So the basketball coach, a man named E.E. Uh, e. McQuillan, says, hey, Coach Bible, I want to keep him here so we can continue practicing. So he was released from the football team in late November to get ready for the South uh, West Conference basketball season. Well, one of the unique things about the Dixie Classic, it's one of the largest football games in, in Texas. It's about 22,000 people that attend the game. At that time, there had only been four or five total bowl games ever played in the United States. So it was a very hot ticket to be at that game. And from then, it takes off. King Gill was practicing basketball. He's on campus. Uh, they take advantage of the December break to really prepare the team and at the last minute the coach lets the team go over the new year's holiday and he decides to go visit his family in dallas so he hitchhikes up to dallas which oddly enough turns out to be his birthday on new year's eve and he knows that the aggies are there to play uh, so he hitchhikes over to fair park 
uh, the old stadium, this was before the Cotton Bowl, and uh, didn't have the money to get in, so he said, well, I'll hang out. And when the team arrives on the bus, he walks in with the team. And of course, they all know him, and he just, they just go down, and he's on the sidelines. While he's on the sidelines, one of the uh, leading sports writers, Jinx Tucker, who's of the Waco paper, uh, asked the coach and some of the uh, people there, hey, I need somebody to spot for me. So they turned over there and pointed and said, hey, take this kid here, King Gill. He was on the team, he's just up here visiting. So he goes up, now he's got a seat, so he goes up and sits in the press box and ends up being a spotter since he knows all the players. And best of my knowledge, there aren't any other players there from the team that did not travel. Because of the 36 players, Bible only took 16 or 17 with him up to Dallas for the game. The game will start and Center College is big, they're extremely talented, they're very physical, and we keep having injuries. At that time, if you did not have 11 players on the field, you would have to forfeit the game. Bible realized at that moment, oh my gosh, if we lose one more player, it would be too late then. We don't have anybody to send in. And the press box couldn't have been too far away in a smaller stadium. He turned and pointed or waved at Gill. So he came out of the press box where he was sitting and came down to the sidelines and exchanged civilian clothes for the uniform that Heine Weir had on to be ready, to stand ready for the second half. A few years back, they found a recording of a muster presentation that the keynote speaker was E. King Gill. Uh, he is introduced by General Earl Rudder and he outlines and tells his story first person about what happened at the Dixie Classic and how the 12th man evolved. Now we did, we, we lost a lot of our players. We lost most of our backfield men. We had, we, we ended up the first half, we, we, we had no more substitutes. And here I saw somebody waving to me to come down and, and get in uniform. But we got out of the stand, it's, it was entirely open, but we took a couple of blankets and they took Heine Weir's uniform off and put it on me, put my clothes on him. <laughs> and that's the way I went out to uh, sit on the bench and later on to become the 12th man. During the days of radio, when they, I believe they had a program called the Pig Skin Parade, they asked that a and dramatize an incident for radio. And E.E. E. McQuillan, who was the former secretary of the Lex Students Association thought of this incident. And he dramatized it and put it in story form. And that's the way the tradition started. But I've never thought that the 12th man really belonged to our personality. It belongs to the a &M student body. One of the interesting things is after this Dixie Classic game as a sophomore, uh, he's ready to come back in basketball. He, he becomes a star on the basketball team at all Southwest Conference for that uh, 22 season. Uh, he immediately rolls right into baseball and this will continue through his senior year. He will be one of the last lettered all Southwest Conference players of three sports from Texas A&M. There are, there are no others. After finishing Texas A&M, King Gill coached football in Greenville, Texas. Graduated from Baylor Medical School and served as a colonel in the, war, in the Air Force during World War II with distinguished records both in the United States and in the Philippines. So Dr. Gill uh, ended up with a uh, ear, nose, and throat practice in Corpus Christi. Uh, and we just knew him as Big King. He was like a grandfather figure. I think he would just be amazed at it all. And every one of you can be a 12th man. If you stand up for what's right and be ready to serve. And these traditions uh, will grow more valuable to you as you get older. So it's my wish uh, here today that you preserve these traditions. It's made me a better Aggie. It'll make you a better Aggie. Those are my thoughts today. If they've helped a little bit, I'm thankful I was here.